Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozori, Evinrude, Lamaglass, the Marina at Carteret Park, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. Well, the Super Bowl has passed. That means we've got one week until pitchers and catchers report, two weeks until the Daytona, according to our Jersey boy, Martin Truex, and of course, just three weeks to go until New Jersey's Back Bay Striper season opens on March 1st. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. We'll start this week's video forecast with the breaking news on the striped bass front. Uh, you saw it in thefisherman.com this week talking about the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting next Thursday, but there's a little update to talk to you about. The Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission met this week on Tuesday, and essentially the first thing that they did, the ASMFC threw out all of New Jersey striped bass options for conservation equivalency. Yeah, so that article that was posted online doesn't necessarily make sense. But after they did that, what happened was Rhode Island got their conservation equivalency plan approved. So New Jersey went back and there was a secondary option to allow New Jersey to consider an option similar to what Rhode Island had passed. Now, I will tell you this, all this talk about conservation equivalency, New York had tried to get some conserva conservation equivalency options through as well. That failed. So. In addition to the one at 28 to 35 inches that we knew was coming down the pike, it appears New Jersey will also be considering a slot option of something in the neighborhood of one at 28 to 38 or perhaps one at 30 to 40 inches. So ASMFC is sticking to their guns as far as keeping an upper slot. They don't want a lot of those big breeders being harvested in 2020. Can't argue with that. But we will be looking at at these options or some semblance of these options on Thursday, February 13th at five o'clock at the Stafford Township Municipal Building. That's at 260 East Bay Avenue in Manahawkin. The meeting starts at 5 p.m. Now the New Jersey Striped Bass Advisory Panel is meeting this week. I think they were supposed to meet on Wednesday night, but they're gonna go through these options, send them along to the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council. So next Thursday, February 13th, I would encourage you, if you have an opinion on what to do with striped bass, attend that meeting in Manahawkin because that's where everything is going to ultimately get finalized. And that, this week, is our State of the Striper Union address from the Speaker of this house here in New Jersey. Uh, we call that New Jersey derangement syndrome. Now, let's get on to the reports. We spoke with Bob Matthews this week at the Fisherman's Den. Uh, he said that the best bet for fishing success right now is definitely blackfish on the party boats of your choice. But you don't have a lot of choices right now out of Belmar. The only boat running uh, the party boat uh, is Ocean Explorer. I know Roger from Brooklyn, he took over the lead in this, uh, in this yearly pool that they run on the Ocean Explorer. He had a 12 pound, six ounce brute of a, a tog uh, last weekend. Cod Ling are also showing, according to Bob Matthews, on some of the charter boats that are heading out of Shark River. And of course, don't forget, black fish tog will run out in New Jersey at the end of February. We go into a little break. Now out of Manasquan Inlet, in addition to those jumbo tog, you also have some jumbo cod in the mix. A 24.9 pound cod for John Weaver aboard the Jamaica 2 last week. So it's good to have that option. Of course, the boats that are sailing out of Manasquan, there are a few boats still hitting the bottom fish grounds. They're going for ling, they're going for tog, and of course they're going for some of those cod as well. As far as the sailing schedules, again, there aren't a lot of boats. It's a weather permitting type of deal. And of course, we're dealing with all this winter weather, even as mild as it, as it is. Um, it looks like a sailing day is in the forecast, however, for the weekend ahead on Saturday. Regrettably, as we check in with the South Jersey down into Delaware fleet, uh, things are very, very quiet. Most of the anglers that I've spoken to are actually getting into some of the white perch action off of some of the creeks off of, uh, of the Delaware, in Delaware, and also down into South Jersey, Padcom, Tuckahoe, Egg Harbor, Mullica River. I did see where John T. checked in with Dave at Obsequian Bay Sportsman Center this week to report that the white perch were biting. So that's a matter of getting on those some of those locations that are productive, I would suggest stopping in the tackle shops, Bucktail Outfitters in Mays Landing or David Absecan Bay, Bloodworms, Sandworms, and of course, Grass Shrimp. 
Same thing up around Tom's River, where Dennis at the Hook House said he's getting bloodworms delivered every Tuesday and Friday throughout this month, as long as folks are giving it a shot on the Tom's River, hearing some good things about folks catching white perch there on the toms. In addition to that, there were plenty of stripers in the back, which of course, you're not allowed to target uh, striped bass in the back bay, but just the fact that they're in there mixed with the perch in the numbers that they seem to be with this mild winter that we're having could bode well for that March 1st opener for striped bass. Now outside of that, obviously there's not a lot of ice to fish. Folks are a little bit frustrated by that. So much open water in the state of New Jersey but you're throwing a bunch of lemons, you gotta make lemonade. I know kayaker Frank Rosinski, he's been out looking for yellow perch and pickerel, but also finding some of these big pre-spawn female largemouth have gotten feisty rather early this year. Forget about, about what the groundhog says, it's what those spawning largemouth say, and perhaps spring does get off to an earlier start than we would accustom to. Also, John Augustine shared on Facebook with me this photo of a great walleye catch on the Delaware River for Chris Novak. So those walleye are active in the Delaware as well. My most recent foray into walleye world didn't go so well when I was fishing with my buddy George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. In fact, I checked in with George this week and he ended up going to Harrisburg to get some professional advice. Hey, thanks, Jim. You know, we're down here in Harrisburg at the Great American Outdoor Show, and who we bump into but the Great American <laughs> Fisherman himself, Roland Martin. Hey, thank you. Thank you thanks thank you for taking it. a couple of, uh, minutes to talk with us. Uh, you know, Roland, the, the, uh, the season's been really bad here. We've been looking for ice, and guys are really struggling trying to get some fish. What kind of tips do you have for guys this year to get on some fish? One thing is keep your ears open. At this show last night, we were sitting there watching the Super Bowl game, and guess what, folks? The guys were fishing the, the Susquehanna yesterday and catching a few smallmouth. Ah, I was asking them, I said, what are you doing? Like if you're on a little pond and there's, there's open water, a lot of times if a warm wind has been blowing, it light, it's liable to pile up a little bit of the warm water on one of the shorelines. It might be two or three degrees warmer mm -hmm. where that warm water is kind of pushed in than it was on the other side of the lake. And that might be a better place to fish. So look for the warmest water. That's great advice. I think I'm going to go try these tips on the way home. But uh, thank you very much for this. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's good to get advice from the pros. And what better than from a legend like Rolla Martin? Well, I'm going to go head out and do some fishing myself. From Harrisburg, PA, with Rolla Martin, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Of course, that Harrisburg show is a biggie, but we've got some biggies here in New Jersey and the eastern part of Pennsylvania in the next couple of weeks. New Jersey Boat Sale and Expo is next weekend, February 13th through the 16th. Right after that, we go to Oaks, PA for the Philadelphia Fishing Show. That's from February 21st until the 23rd. Caps it off down in Atlantic City for the Atlantic City Boat Show from February 26th until March 1st. Now don't forget, the Fisherman Magazine has a full complement of seminars in New Jersey at the Philly Show and also in Atlantic City with the help from the Recreational Fishing Alliance. You can find out more about some of these great events and the seminar schedules as we get them updated by going over to our calendar of events listing over at thefisherman.com. Now while you're there, don't forget to sign up for the newsletter if you're not getting our bi-weekly newsletter alerts on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Make sure you've got the breaking news for some of these striper meetings and stuff like that. And also, be sure to subscribe to the Fisherman's YouTube channel. All you have to do is tap the bell. Now, this Saturday, flea market time. We have the VFW Post 2179 in Port Monmouth hosting the Highmar Striper Club Fisherman Flea Market. That event is going to be held from 8 a.m. till 2 p.m. A lot of great seminars over at that flea market as well. Then on Sunday, February 9th, I'll be out at the Charles Street School in Palmyra. That's that Palmyra event. It's really become such a great event down in South Jersey. $10 early bird entry at 8 a.m. If you want to get in there and get some of those plugs and old reels before somebody else gloms them up when the show doors open up at 9 a.m. for a $4 admission. That show is going to run till 2 p.m. Always a great event. I'll have some of these outstanding Savage Baits 
these savage squid imitations, plastics. I don't know if I'll have the pink or the chartreuse or the brown color. You'll have to find out when you get there. I'll also have some gifts, the fish bites for you. This is all for your subscription. You get your new or renewing subscription to the Fisherman Magazine's print edition. I'll hook you up with a couple of goodies before you send, uh, go out into the, uh, into the good day. Uh, of course, I'll also have some of those decals, those 3R decals. We are still looking for investors in the Northeast Striped Bass Study. Now, after finishing up the Raritan Bay Anglers Club event this past weekend, I can tell you that we're just about at $5,000 raised through this decal sales effort. But that's with some help from the folks at the Berkeley Striper Club. They gave us a $1,000 donation through their Fisheries Defense Fund. Can't thank those folks enough. So come on out, see us, pick up one of the decals, help support that major effort. We're in the planning stages now to figure out how many striped bass uh, satellite tags we can purchase to put in some post-spawn stripers this May in the lower Hudson River. Should be a great effort. We're looking forward to it. Hopefully you can join us. You get details, of course, over at thefisherman.com. Ask me for those details at the Palmyra Show. And, of course, participate by going in to thefisherman.com. I will see you in Palmyra on Sunday. Or I'll see you at the Striped Bass Hearing in Manahawkin next Thursday. Of course, I'll always see you in the Fisherman Magazine and right here at thefisherman.com.